Hello and welcome to the Jessica McDonald Designs podcast, episode one. I am Jessica McDonald, the person behind Jessica McDonald Designs. I thought I would start a podcast because I've been really enjoying a lot of podcasts lately. I've been really having a good time just sitting and knitting and having a cup of tea with whoever I'm watching. It's it's a lot of fun. So I decided I was going to jump in and share my knits with you and hopefully you enjoy it. This is a podcast about knitting and designing and general hand knit wearing. Um, if I dabble in other crafts, I will also show that, but I really don't have a lot of time on my hands, so I generally just knit. So. Um, a bit of an introduction who I am. I am Jessica. I live in rural Idaho. Um, if you're picturing Wolfles, Idaho, this is a little bit different. I live in southern Idaho. I live right at the southern end of the tallest mountain range in Idaho, so it's very much so high desert here. A lot of sagebrush, a lot of well, there's a lot of trees in the mountains, but not really where we live. We're down in the valley. We live at about 5,475 feet, so it's really cold here. It's uh, gardening zone four. If you're into gardening and you know kind of what that means, it's very cold here. <laughs> um, so for, for me, wearing a sweater is not just um, something that you do for style or for fun. It's very, very necessary. I'm somebody who's always cold, so I always have a sweater on even in the summertime. I usually wear one at least part of the day. So for me, wearing sweaters is a way of life and a passion, and I really love to make them. So it works out really well for me to be a knitter and a designer. Um, I have three young children. The oldest is five, so a lot of my knitting is for my children. I am really pretty disgusted with the availability of good sweaters for children, so I, uh, I pretty much make all their knits, all their sweaters, all their hats, and that's, I just, wool is so much better than any other material, it's better than cotton way better than acrylic, so I really like them to wear wool, even though they're not as cold as me, I still just put them in a wool sweater, because that's what you do when you're a mom, you put your kid in a sweater when you're cold, they can choose that for themselves when they're older. Um, so, uh, a lot of my designs are sweaters, that's kind of something that I really love to make and wear, but I do... I do some hats and I will do some accessories as I feel the need or desire to do so, but most of my designs are sweaters. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Jessica M. Knits. That's my username in both places. And I'll put links to all these things down below so you can you can find me a little more easily. Um, make notes, maybe I will follow them this time. Um, I thought I would make, since this is the first episode, I thought I would make this a little bit of an episode of firsts, so I thought I would show you the very first thing that I ever made. I learned to knit when I was first married, 21, and my mother decided the best thing for me to make was a baby blanket. You know, some subtle hinting that she wanted grandchildren. Well, she had to wait quite a while before she got any, so I made this yellow baby blanket. It's got a diamond pattern to it, um, and then the border is just a crocheted on border. It's, the yarn is acrylic wool blend, I think, but this is the very first thing I made. I very rarely use it because yellow is not really my color. But it turned out to be a really good thing to be the first thing for me to make because the patterning required that I learn to read my knitting because it only gave instructions for the right side, it's knit so many, purl so many, etc. 
etc. And then the wrong side was knit the knits and purl the purl. So you can see down here at the bottom, it took me a little while to figure out how to do it, but I got it sorted out. So it was a really good learning exercise in how to read my knitting. And that's an essential skill, really. So it turned out to be a pretty good project. I still have it, never used it. And then I've knit a bunch of stuff that was nine years ago. Although technically I am 31, so it was more like nine and a half years ago. And then when I had my first, who's now five, I wanted to make her a special outfit for Christmas. And I had this little floral blouse that was super cute. And I wanted to make this little tunic or dress to put over top of it. And it would just be so perfect. And I had this green yarn from Madeline Tosh that I wasn't using. And it was perfect Christmas colors and I wanted to use it. But it was a sport weight and I couldn't find a pattern. So I made one. Of course, I didn't finish this in time for her first Christmas. It was done in January, um, so she wore something else instead. But this is the very first thing I designed. This is the wildflower tunic, and it took me three years from this version to when I published the pattern finally on Ravelry. So the first, the first one took a very long time to, the first design took a very long time to get, you know, figure out the whole process of how to make a pattern. So, it's a little, you could make it a dress, but really it's a tunic length. I mean, you could just keep knitting longer on the skirt and it would be a dress. It really is a tunic. And the way it's made with positive ease and a longer skirt means they can really wear it for two years because first year it's a tunic, second year it's just a little shirt. It's top down in the round. It has some little buttons here. And then uh, the skirt has a little flower texture pattern on it. That's really cute. And it's it's super cute to just put on over leggings or jeans, over a long sleeve onesie or a nice little shirt that matches with it. It's so cute. And it's so warm. I just really like it. This is the second one I made. This was when Brenda was a baby. She's my middle child and she was a baby. I made her this. And the third one, I won't show you because it's very, very, very well worn. But these two are in good shape because they were baby, baby knits. The babies don't really put a lot of wear on their knits, but toddlers do, so you can see the baby ones. So those are the first, that was my first design, my first knit, my first design. And this sweater that I'm wearing is the first adult sweater pattern, my first adult design that I did, and it started out as I was making a sweater for Talia, and I made, that was the little Isla, and Isla is spelled I-S-L-A, it's a little Isla pattern, and I loved it so much that I decided to scale up the pattern and make, write it for adults as well. So it's got this really pretty, make sure this is focused, it's really pretty lace yoke the top, the neckline is kind of wide. I didn't want it to be really tight on the neck. This was before I knew about short rows for um, uh, raising the back neck, so I made it kind of a wider neck, but it looks really nice layered over a collared shirt. And the body is just plain. I can show you. The body is just plain. I don't think I'll ever make another cardigan for myself with buttons for quite a while because my children are right at the age where they love to do buttons and so I'll be doing whatever I'm doing and some little hands will just come stealing around me and start undoing my buttons and so I think I'll just I'll just wait before I do another button cardigan but it's really it's really I think it's really pretty I really like it I enjoy wearing it it's made out of Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, which is held up really well, although it's only, it's only about a year and a half old, so it hasn't got a ridiculous amount of wear yet, but it's, it looks pretty nice, and so does Talia's. Talia's um, Little Isla is made out of the same yarn, and obviously it's gotten a lot more wear because it's on a, on a child, and it still looks really nice, so I've been pleased with the wearability of this yarn, so I like it. And, yeah, 
All right, that's uh, my first thing. So I think we'll go into what I have been doing more recently. So I've got this little sweater. This is Ridgeline that I have published it two or three weeks ago. Just recently I designed this for Jimmy. He really needed a pullover for this, this winter so I made this for him. And it's got this textured pattern in the yoke. Focus it on there so you can see it. The first place I saw this textured pattern was in a uh, a little woolen slip that my great grandmother made for my grandmother and I really loved that textured pattern but of course I've been seeing it all over the place now. And so I uh, figured out how to make that textured pattern and um, put it in this yoke, this round yoke. It's top down in the round, round yoke. It's made out of quince and co lark. The color is Iceland and I really, I really like this color. It's a really pretty soft gray and it looks really cute on him. He looks incredibly handsome in his little pullover with a little blue gingham shirt on. He's just he's very handsome, very handsome little boy. So I really like the simple texture on the top and then just the plain body. It's very I don't like um, I don't like it when kids' clothes are really busy or really colorful. It's not something I like. I like them to be more understated, and so this is this is pretty understated, but it's still interesting because it's got this lovely yoke for for interest, and I think it looks really nice. It looks really nice um, just on its own too. You can also put it on girls. But a lot of my testers made it for um, for girls. Put it on girls. So. It does look very nice on girls too, it's a unisex design, but I did design it with a little boy in mind, so if that bothers you. Um, I, think, I think it looks really nice. I could put it on Brenna because it fits her too. Jimmy and Brenna are only one size apart and this is one size too big for Jimmy. So I could put it on Brenna and take a picture of it on a girl, but not very easy with a three-year-old so I haven't done that but it um, it looks really nice I really like it this uh, more understated style I really like um, this sort of Scandinavian aesthetic where it's um, a bit more pared back style so that's something that inspires me a lot in uh, my knitting and my designing is, is some elements from that so, Ridgeline, it's now, now available on Ravelry. You can go and, and buy a copy of it if you want to. It's four sizes, two through 12. And really you should, um, when you're choosing what size to make for your kid, you should, or the kid who's gonna wear it, you should choose the size of clothes that they wear. So if they wear a 4T, do a size four. Um, Cause the, Jimmy's 18 months and he's in 3T, so you can't always go by their age. So just go by what size clothing they wear. So, originally, that's one finished object. Then another thing that I finished is I did some mending. This may not be very exciting, but I put elbow patches on my Rosemont cardigan. This, this sweater is four years old, I think. That's my best guess. I didn't ravel the finished project. I'm pretty sure it's four years old. And last winter I had to re-knit the cuffs. So they're new, but I uh, had to do elbow patches this year and really I did a terrible, terrible job. I don't, I don't know how to mend. So this is, I guess this will be a mending sampler for me, this sweater, because as it wears out, I want to make it last as long as possible and to mend it and wear it until it just, falls apart. So I had some leftover yarn from when I made it, so I did some elbow patches. And this one, um, on this side, I picked up, down here, I picked up these stitches, and then I knit, um, and as I went along, I picked up a leg of each stitch on each side, and knit two together, or purl two together, and then at the top, I picked up a leg of the stitches on top, and then Kitchenered my live stitches to those stitches, and it just it didn't turn out well. It's bulky along the edges and these stitches are all 
wonky and leaning and honestly I think they got twisted too so it just does not look good and I'd, I'd never wear this out of the house anymore because it's kind of my house sweater so it doesn't really matter but I still want it to look nice and I want to learn how to do nice mending because I don't want to throw away my stuff as soon as it gets a little hole in it. This side I did a little different. I picked up along the bottom and I just knit a flap and bound off and then I kind of whip stitched it around the other three sides and I think this looks nicer but it's still not, I don't think it's perfect. I sh what I should have done is separately knit a big elbow patch, much bigger than I needed to cover the hole and just reinforce the hole and then sewed on a big elbow patch and I think that would have looked a lot nicer but I'm not really sure. I couldn't really find any good resources on the best way to mend a giant hole in the elbow. So if you know how to mend an elbow or you know of a good resource that um, that will teach me how to mend an elbow, let me know because there's going to be more elbows that need mending in this house. So if you know of a book or a blog or whatever, just comment and let me know because I, I really need to know how to mend my sweaters because I don't want to throw them away. It's kind of wasteful. All those hours of knitting and, and all of that money you put into yarn. Speaking of yarn, this is also Quince & Co. Lark. It's, I think it's one of my favorite yarns at the moment. So this is four years old and it has been worn hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And it's still, I mean, the yarn has held up really well. There's some pilling. I should, um, should shave it off, but um, it has really held up really, really well, the yarn. Aside from, you know, the cuffs and the elbows wearing through, I mean, there's still good st stitch definition. The back of the collar is starting to get a little felted from all the rubbing on the back of my neck. And, but that's okay. I mean, it's been worn hundreds and hundreds of times. But it's really held up really well. The durability of this yarn is, is fantastic. So, and then I have another finished object. Um, my Pines hat. This is also Quince and Colark. You might notice a bit of a theme in this episode, Quince and Co. Love episode. Um, so this is Pines. I came up with des this design last winter. I think it was February or March. I needed a hat and so I was going to design a hat and I was looking at the forests out my uh, my kitchen window and I thought I'd like to make a hat that kind of pulls that, uh, that feeling of pines, that look of pine trees into it and using cables and I messed around with my chart a lot and did some swatching, a nice little hat swatch, tiny little hat swatch. You might notice this is the same yarn as my Rosemont. I bought way too much yarn when I made this sweater and so I have plenty for swatching. I've had this little swatch hat just sitting around for the last six months. Just waiting, the chart ready to go. Everything's just waiting and waiting and waiting until I had time to make it. And finally, it's November. I finished a big secret project and my ears are cold. So I made my hat. So you can see the pine trees in it. You have, this is a double brim. I also included instructions for a single brim in case you don't like the double brim, but my ears get cold. So I want a double brim because I want it to be nice and cozy and warm. It's cold here, so, and I'm cold, so double brim for me. And the, the ribbing flows into these traveling cables that kind of come up into this tree trunk that is a cable that runs up and then you have the branches grow into the reversed stockinette background here. And they kind of grow up that way. My camera only records in 20 minute intervals, so there's a little bit of a break there. That's because we hit 20 minutes. So back to the hat. You can see the, the branches here growing up. And really, if you look at it, you can imagine this is the trunk 
and the branches are going up. Or this is the trunk and the branches are going down. So whichever way you look at it, it's trees. It makes me really, uh, really happy to have found a stitch pattern that looks like trees. Like this. I, I think it's fantastic. I think it turned out really well. And let's see if you can see the crown. Focus on the crown here. So I decrease in this reverse stockinette section and kind of suck the cables in together. And then for the final bit, you can see it kind of looks like it crosses again right there, but that's not a cable cross. The last cable cross is right here. These are the decreases and I did the decreases so that um, I've got an SSK and a knit two together and they kind of curve together to mimic the shaping of the cables, the cable crossing. So it looks like the cable is crossing again, but it's actually the decreases are coming together. And so I think it looks really cool. Um, I think it makes for a really neat looking crown. So I'll show you the crown again. I've ordered a pom-pom for it. So after this, um, it should, should come this week, so I'll put a pom-pom on it and then that beautiful crown will be covered up. But very pleased with this. This is the colorway sage, which is actually incredibly difficult to take pictures of and get the color accurate. I think I'm looking at what my camera is recording right now and I think that this color here now is pretty accurate. But all the pictures I've been trying to take of it, you know, are... Not turning out really fantastic, you know, too much direct sun, too much shadow. I'm gonna go see my family next weekend and my sister is a really good photographer. So she's going to take pictures for me and hopefully we'll get an accurate, accurate, accurate color. There, get it focused. Now you can see it on. So, here it is. I always wear my hair, my hats snugged down over my head like this. I'm not a slouchy hat wearer, although if that's your thing, you can do that too. So it, it will be a tiny bit slouchy to decide to wear it at the back like this. But um, the repeat of the trees um, in here is only for rounds each repeat so if you wanted it slouchier or shorter you could add or remove repeats quite easily so this pattern is in testing right now it will be coming out in about a week from the recording of this video so probably december 1st or maybe november 30th um so this hat is about to come out I'll put a link to my, if I figure out how to edit this video and put the two halves together and upload it to YouTube before this hat comes out, <laughs> you can sign up for my newsletter. I'll put a link down below and you can sign up for my newsletter and get an email with a coupon and make sure you don't miss out on this hat if you want this hat. So there's a little more to the story of this hat um, that's um, quite a bit more personal. I don't know um, if you are really interested in, in deeply personal stories, but it's... I want to talk about it, so... Earlier this month, I finished a secret project, a big secret project. I finished it off, and basically the next day, I had a miscarriage. And... I really needed something to work on while I rested, and not only physical rest, but mental and emotional rest, because after this miscarriage, I had a lot of anxiety. Um, and, yeah, your emotional state after a miscarriage is not always straightforward. It's not always just, you know, pure grief. Sometimes it's kind of messy. So I had this ready to go. The chart was all ready to go. The pattern was ready to go. The yarn was sitting there wound. It was just, perfect because I could just, I just stuck it all in my bag and went and sat downstairs and knit. And I did a double brim, which is so it's four inches of ribbing, which is really meditative. I really find ribbing to be a very calming 
knitting pattern. So it was really just the thing I needed for how I was feeling. Plus the doing the cable pattern. So it's, it's a really simple repeat. It's very intuitive, but it requires some small amount of focus every single round. And it turned out to be just absolutely perfect for what I needed. Like a plain stockinette something would have been too easy. I would have just, you know, gone round and round and round and my brain could have just kept going and worrying and um, being anxious. And this required some focus. I had to think about what I was doing and pay attention to what I was doing. And so working on this was really just what I needed. It was really what I needed. Because I could, you know, sit down and knit for 20 minutes on these cables and feel, you know, that panicky anxiety feeling just go away. So it was very healing to knit this hat. So, yes. And uh, knitting is not just utilitarian to make something warm to wear. It's, it's got a lot of mental health benefits. It's a very, very comforting thing to do when you're in a poor mental state. Um, so it's not just, you know, not just making a hat. It's more to it than that. So, and... I really enjoy the craft sessions. Um, I don't know if you know about the craft sessions, her blog. Um, she wrote a blog post on you know, the difference between numbing and true comfort. And it would have been very easy to just sit on my phone and mindlessly scroll for hours and that would not have, you know, had any healing benefits to it or any comfort benefits to it. It would have just been numbing, but a few hours of knitting is true comfort and very healing. So, yeah, knitting is, is more than just something to do with your hands. So, it's a very special project for me, very meaningful, and it's utilitarian. Keeps my ears very warm. I have worn this a ton, I may just wear it the rest of the time. I have hat hair. Nobody will mind. It's just my husband and my children here. Nobody cares what my hair looks like. So, that's all of my finished objects. I have a half. I don't know if this counts as a finished object. It's only half mitten. One mitten um, that I finished this morning. So, Jimmy doesn't have mittens. So, I uh, started mittens for him. I started this one. This is um, the... Um, the World's Simplest Mittens by Tim Cadnitz. I have never made a mitten before, which may sound a bit like, this is a little out of focus, like knitting sacrilege to have never knit a mitten before in, what, nine and a half years of knitting, but, um, yeah, so I'm, knit, I'm making mittens, and they're actually really easy and really fun to do, so. This is the smallest size. This is worst weight yarn. I didn't swatch. I didn't measure his hand or anything. So I thought, you know, I'll just make the small size. It'll probably be good. And it's not. It's too small. So I've got a mostly finished mitten that I abandoned and made the next biggest size, which is a little bit big. His fingers come to about here where the decreases start. So they're about here. So it's a little big, but that's okay because it's only November. He's going to need to wear it for months. So. Fits Brenna perfectly, but it's a little big for Jimmy. But I'm making this out of fiber for the people. People, oh Merino. I bought this, it's worsted weight, I bought this last year and I was originally planning to make this hat out of it, but it's too soft. It doesn't have the stitch definition to really work with these cables. So it has just been sitting there waiting for something else and it's really perfect for this because it's really soft really, really soft. So he's got these fantastic little war mittens. It's a half-finished object, I guess. I've got the other ones just barely started. Hopefully I'll finish that today. We're gonna go get our Christmas tree tomorrow, so I want to uh, kind of have these done in time for him to wear while getting our Christmas tree. Out in the mountains, it's gonna be cold, so. The World's Simplest Mitten, which is incredibly simple and 
I don't know why I never made mittens before, so I may be making more mittens in the future. Maybe for the girls, although they've got their snow mittens, so they don't technically need mittens, but I may just make the mittens. Just for the heck of it. So, I think that's all of my finished or half finished objects. I'll tell you some of my plans I've got here. This is Quince Co. Lark. This is um, Fjord. It's leftover from a sweater I made for Jimmy that you may get to see next podcast episode. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to make this into another one of these. I've got 190 yards and this hat used, I think it was 182 or 186 yards exactly. I said 200 yards in the pattern because I, I give a um, buffer in case in case you need you know a little extra. So I, I generally do a, like a 10% error on my yardage calculations. So this is 190 yards together so I'm thinking I may make it just a single brim and then also that will let me um, do a yardage calculation for just a single brim which will be nice to do so this is going to be another hat which I think is just meant to be a perfect amount of yarn so maybe next time you'll get to see that those are my plans there got this yarn back here I've got um, plenty of Brooklyn Tweed Loft. This is the colorway fossil. I bought it last winter for a design that didn't work out. So, and I didn't want it to go to waste. I really hate to have just this pile of yarn sitting around. Um, so I didn't want this to go to waste. And Talia really needs a cardigan and she really shouldn't wear anything heavier than a fingering weight. Um, so I can make her a cardigan which this watch goes on forever I wanted to do something that didn't work out that didn't work out that didn't work out finally this was kind of the basis of the design there so maybe next time we'll have something to show you there I really this it's really a rustic yarn it's kind of feels kind of stiff when you're knitting it and kind of crunchy and you kind of think Ugh, it's gonna be rough but once you wash it it gets really really drapey and really nice. It makes a really good fabric and it's very lightweight and very warm. So it will be perfect for her. And I wanna have that done before Christmas. So I just need to do the pattern grading, all of the math and the pattern writing, and then I can cast on. And hopefully I'll have something to show you next time on that one. And then I've also got a sweater's quantity of Wisconsin wool and spun that I bought. I can't even remember when I bought this. Earlier this year, this is rain shower, colorway rain shower, which when I saw it on my computer, I thought it was going to be more gray, but it's a little browner than I thought it would be. Let's see if you can see it there, focus on it. There you go. Um, but it's really, it's a really lovely colorway, and I think it's going, going to be just perfect. So I've got plans for a sweater for me out of this. Swatch is fairly boring, just some stockinette, a little ribbing, but it makes a really nice fabric. And I think this would be a perfect yarn for a colorwork sweater because of the way the stitches bloom when you wash it. So this may be something next time, but we'll see how much time I have. It's not a long knitting to do. I really need to knuckle down and get to it. So, yeah, I think that's everything I have to show you today. So thank you for stopping by and, and uh, hearing about all of my stuff, listening to me blather on about knitting. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. And bye.